wonderful singing this morning. The, uh, you know, man has, throughout history, has struggled with that very thing. What is my, what am I here for? What's my purpose? Why, why am I created? And she just told you. You weren't necessarily created to cure cancer. You weren't necessarily created to be a ball player. You know, I heard a guy today say he, 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 he feels like his calling is to be a police officer. And I don't necessarily disagree with that. I, I think for a, someone to serve in that capacity uh, is not just something you wake up and go, I think that'd be kind of cool. I, I think there has to be an internal desire to help people, right? And, uh, and through that, whether it's police officer, firefighter, EMT worker, where you work at, whatever, God created us in, to use those specific things to honor Him. And so when you look and you, you start thinking, well, why am, I, why am I here? What? Why am I created, right? And a lot of people struggle with that. And Brother John, they get to the place, they can't figure that out, and they end up either turning to drugs, alcohol, some to suicide, some to illicit relationships. And if you and I would realize that God created each of us for a specific reason, and that one thing she just sang about, to serve the Lord. Now that is different capacities. We're not all preachers, and we're not all Sunday school teachers, and we're not all bus workers, but wherever you are, God created you for this purpose to serve Him and bring glory to Him. And so uh, in order for us to know that, now, you, you realize that God has given you some value in life. Now, the world may not value you, and sometimes we don't value ourselves, and our families may not sometimes, but the fact is God puts a high uh, price tag on you, and uh, the fact is that he sent his son to die for you. That's how much he thought of you, that if you were the only one here, Jesus would have come and died just for you. And so in that, we have to say God's been good to us. Now, uh, I want to go ahead and tell you that... Um, we're going to change some things this morning, so you put that outline in your Bible. You bring it next week. We might preach on it. But I want you to turn to Psalms 34 this morning. Psalms 34, and I want to begin in verse number 1. And, and the reason, this morning I was getting ready for church, and um, I, was, I was just preparing, uh, getting my heart right, getting my mind right. And so I was, uh, someone had shared a video, and... Uh, Brother Mark Stroud was preaching. He gave this example of this young man who was, uh, he was preaching on how good God's been to us. And, and uh, he said he was in a meeting one time and, and uh, they were singing a song about the goodness of God. And this young man was in a wheelchair and uh, said he was strapped in and uh, his hands were crippled and he had some, some mental uh, capacity issues and, and some speech problems and he said he's uh, it kind of got on in the service and he, he noticed this young man had unbuckled his seat belt from that wheelchair and got down out of the wheelchair and crawled to the altar and he said man I had to get up there and hear what he was saying and he said he just said this thing and, and he said in his broken English he said God you've been good to me and boy I, I got under su such conviction because I think so often I do maybe you as well I start categorizing all the things that don't seem fair to me I stop focusing on all the things that God has done and how good God is and I start looking at all the things that aren't fair and the deficiencies and the inequity in life and how I feel like, and let's be honest, it happens, right? Sometimes it seems like events happen in our life and you're thinking, man, I'm trying to serve God. And I, I mentioned it earlier in that humanistic mindset, we deserve certain things. We deserve to be happy. We deserve, you know, health care, a good job. What are you, you plug in and in our mind, because of who we are, we deserve some things. And the reality of it is, as we study Scripture, if there's none righteous, no, not one, then the only thing we really deserve is eternity in a devil's hell. And anything above that is God's blessing on our life. And, and see, when we do that, it changes our perspective. Whatever house you live in, God's been good to let you live in it. Whatever job you have may not be the greatest, but you have it. I mean, you see what I'm saying? 
Brother Tim sent me a text this week and said uh, he shouldn't have been making fun of my Chevrolet truck because the battery in his or his uh, Ford truck wouldn't crank. And I said, well, if it makes you feel any better, the reason mine didn't crank, I made fun of Brother Jeff's Ford tractor because it wouldn't crank. So next time you get ready. But I, when you got to drop, you know, 200 bucks on a battery, you're kind of going, that, this ain't good. But how minor is that? I mean, I mean, how minor are the things that we get all tore up about, about how bad things are? You know, we'll, we'll take a moment in time where something may not be good and the devil will blind us to where we think it's all not good. Right. Amen? Yeah. We'll, we'll take, we'll take a, a couple minutes in a day and say, how's your day been? It's been terrible. A moment in that day will cause our whole day to be terrible, Right? A, a, a few days in a month will cause the whole month to be terrible. And before you know it, if you ask someone who feels like they focus on all this instead of all this, they'll say, my life is terrible. And we forget the fact that just the, 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 the fact that we live in this country, that's a blessing. Listen, I know we got a lot of mess going on in this country. But it's still the best place on earth to live. Now, I know that as Christians, we go and think about sometimes the hypocrisy that goes on in our local churches. But I want to say this, I, I'm still glad we got a local church to go to. Sometimes, Brother Gary, we look at our families and go, man, my kids are not doing exactly like I want them to. But let me say this, there's people all over the world that would love to have your kids. Young people, there's people all over the world that love to have your mom and dad that cared enough for you to uh, drag you to church when the doors are open and, and provide a place for you to live. I'm just saying that things could be much worse for us, but our minds tend to focus on what we don't have instead of what we do. And I just want to share a psalm with you, and I believe God's laid this on my heart, and because I think sometimes we just got to get back to being grateful. David, the psalmist, wrote this in Psalm 34, 1. Notice what he said. I will bless the Lord at all times. Again, you know the story of David. David's life was not perfect. He was, God had ordained him king. He had fought Goliath. Saul's trying to kill him. Here's, here's the one that, that God has ordained king living in caves, hiding for his own life. His family was a mess. He'd sinned against God. Here's a man, a man after God's own heart who has done some pretty reproachable things. And here he's saying, I will bless the Lord, not in the good times, but he said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, Brother Johnny, but it sounds to me like if I'm continually praising God, there's not criticism coming out of my mouth. There, there's not ungratefulness coming out of my mouth. If continually I'm blessing the Lord and praise is continually coming out of my mouth, I'm not focused on what I don't have. I'm focused on how good God is. Amen? He goes on to say, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. So it seems to me that that gratefulness, that boasting is an internal thing. See, it's easy to come to church and raise our hand and get stirred up and say amen, praise God. But when we're truly grateful, it's an internal thing. Now, it, it will manifest itself externally. But to praise God... Outwardly without praising him internally is hypocrisy. And so he goes on to say, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Verse 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And delivered me from all my fears. They looked up unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Notice this, he identifies personally in verse 6, he said, This poor man cried, 
And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And the angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him. And delivered them. Look at verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. And so in there, those eight verses, I see David doing something, right? I, I see that David's life was not perfect. It was not uh, what you and I could view and say, man, it's all, everything's lining up for David. He's king and loves God and his family's in line. No, he's on the run. He's sinned. He has let God down. Now we come to chapter 30, Psalm 34. And it, something changes, right? Because no doubt David had some times in his life where he probably did like we did and complained and griped and got down in the dumps. And, but something changed here. Maybe he just started reflecting on all that God had done in his life. And, and he, he changes in verse 1. He said, I will bless the Lord. It didn't matter if anybody else was. David said, I'm going to, regardless of if, uh, listen, gas is 4 or $5 a gallon, I'm still going to bless the Lord. If I can't find baby formula, I'm still going to bless the Lord. If my 401k is, is, is dropping down, I'm still going to uh, bless the Lord. Why? Because God's good to us. Amen? He's good to us because He's good. And, and see, if you only equate the goodness of God to what He does for you, then what's going to happen, you're going to stay over here and the devil's going to let you focus on all the things that aren't going right in your life. The battery died. The water heater blew up. Listen, I, I can have a pity party right with you. But the fact is, I told Miss Ellen when her water heater went out, I said, that thing was put in when the house was built in 1994. Brother Danny, that's pretty amazing. That's... Uh, 20 some years uh, now I didn't get all the use out of it some idea that right hey 20 some years on water heater that's pretty good man when you when your tires go extra 10 20,000 miles uh, on the 30 40,000 mile tire you got man you ought to instead of when you have to replace them complaining about the cost of tires realize you got a few extra miles out of them I'm just saying that that when we focus on what we don't have we stop seeing how good God is and, and you look back in the Garden of Eden, that's exactly what Satan did to Adam and Eve. He got them to question God's word, which caused them to question God's goodness. He had them focus on this one tree that God said don't eat of. And they felt like God was withholding something from them. When God told them they could have all this. Amen? Amen? And God was keeping them from this particular one to keep them safe. And he was blessing them over here. But you know what the devil got them to do? Focus on the thing they could not have. Amen? So we get the same way, don't we? We forget every morning, count your blessings, name them one by one. We stop doing that and we start looking at this saying, man, Putin's price hike and Biden this and America this. And we still got to get over here and start looking at it. But look at all God's done for us. And so in this scripture, in verse 1, we see the expression of goodness. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Now friend, that ain't easy to do, is it? In other words, when we start looking at circumstances, it is hard for us to bless the Lord at all times. It is hard humanly to bless God when cancer hits, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'll knock my halo off. You do the same. When someone else is going through trials in their life, it's easy for us to say, now just, you know, you ought to thank God for it. But when you're going through this different thing, see, you've got to have the mindset. You've got to internalize it. it you can't verbalize it until you internalize it. And, and David's saying here that my gratitude is an expression Look at what he says, I will bless the Lord. Uh, he's saying my expression, my gratitude is, is expressed because I have internalized how good God is. Now, until you do that, until I do that, we will never express, it's shallow, right? Let's be honest. We Baptists have figured it out. 
Brother Kenneth, we know when to raise our hand. Hey, Amen. We sing about the blood. We sing about salvation. Hey, Amen. But why are you doing it? Because of an intellectual knowledge that those things are good. I know the scripture says that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. I know that. I know Jesus shed his blood for me. That is intellectual knowledge. But when we internalize it, and we realize that Jesus did shed his blood, that he did die on the cross in my place, that it should be me, then I feel like that we internalize that that expression of gratitude and we start to bless the Lord even when things don't start look, aren't looking good. It's an expression that must take place in my heart before it ever hits my lips. Because if not, the only time you'll bless the Lord is when things... Listen, how many times do you have a testimony service and people say, I just want to thank God uh, because, uh, listen, my, uh, my, my, bills, uh, my power bill came due and I didn't have any money. And, man, somebody sent a check in the mail. Oh, hallelujah, isn't God good? That's an external circumstance. And there's nothing wrong with blessing God for that. But what happens if nobody sends you a check? Is God still good? Amen. You see, until you internalize what you deserve and what I deserve until we internalize the fact that I'm a sinner and I deserve hell and without God's uh, 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 salvation, without the shedding of blood, then I'd be in hell right now. Now all of a sudden I start seeing myself as this wretched sinner and this God who is good and it's not something I deserve but it's the grace of God, the blessing of God. And when I get that, finally get that, I stop looking at all that I don't have and realize that there is a good God in heaven that did not need to save me. That is something I don't deserve. But out of his mercy, grace, love, and long suffering, uh, he reached down and pulled me out of the miry clay. And then I start internalizing and expressing that God is good. He said, my soul shall make her boast. There it is. Not my mouth, my soul. There ought to be something bubbling inside of you this morning. Not a, man, it's raining this, uh, listen, it's raining too much. Right? We complain. We ain't got any rain in four months. God sends rain. I wish you wouldn't have sent it all at one time. Get up and go to church. Man, it's hot. Man, it's so stinking hot. I don't want to go to church too hot. Starts raining. I don't know if I'll go to church today. I don't get my hair messed up going in the rain. Make up your mind. But when we internalize that God is good, I don't care if it's rain, shine, hot, snow. Sunday morning, I want to get in there with God's people and start praising God a little bit. See, if you let the external affect the internal, what happens is then the only time we think God's good is when the external meets our expectation. And as our expectation grows and God does that, you know what happens? Our expectations get higher. Give you an example. How many of you, and probably... Most of us that are older and maybe even older than me, you'll raise your hand. How many, and I, I'll say this, let me preface it by saying uh, when I turned 16, I got a, a pretty good car looking back on it. How many, how many, be honest, when you turned 16, the car you got right now, you wouldn't ride in because you don't know if it'd get from here to the stop sign. Be honest. A lot of hands going, these young people going, I won't drive anything unless it's a Mustang. (laughs) Right? I mean, you get that thing, you had May Pops on it. The old tires May Pop going down the road, you didn't know, right? But you were thankful that you had something to drive. $200, that would you... $200, $200, I, get, I gave my, I didn't, but I'm saying, I, people say, I'm going to get $200, right? But now look down the road. You wouldn't drive that. 
Now, you would if you had to, but you not like you went out and said, man, I want to be nostalgic. Go get me a 1979 Toyota Corolla. Right? Why? Because when you started out, man, you are just thankful to have anything. Now, you've gone down the road a little bit and your expectations got... Same thing with God, isn't it? Hey, when you first got saved, if, if, if God would do one little thing, you could see God in just about anything, right? Man, you'd praise God at the drop of a hat. Hallelujah, I got to come to church today. Did you hear that choir sing? Man, they, were, they could have been the worst song ever. But in your eyes, it was, uh, it was melody to God. It blessed your heart. Man, that's the best preaching I ever heard this one. Man, that preacher could lay it the biggest dud since Paul. You thought that's, there was something different. It was something going on in here, not something going on right here. Let's be honest, we've got away from that. You want to know why we don't have revival? Because our, our expression's different. What's our altar time? We come to the altar after service. Man, we ain't down here praising God. You know what we're doing? Oh, God, I got a burden. Oh, God, I got a need. Oh, God, you, listen, here, praying for America, praying for this, praying for this, praying for this. When, when, when's the last time you just got on here? Didn't ask God for not one thing. Listen to me, church. Didn't ask him for one thing. Just got on here and said, I want to tell you, God, you've been good to me. Huh? The Lord inhabits the praise of his people. What's your expression of God's goodness, right? What's your expression of God's goodness? But then, secondly, what I see in this scripture, in verse 3, he said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together that tells me here that David's going from the expression in here to exaltation here what do you talk about with people listen I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm tell you something church I'm glad we can fellowship but standing right there in the doorway before church, talking about what happened this week, whether or not your corn's growing, whether or not whatever it is, that ain't what that's for. Amen. Amen. See, we ought to come in here with the singular purpose of exalting God. You can put your Facebook down for a little while. You don't have to text people, last minute text. You don't have to gram or chat. Hallelujah, I'm preaching good. When you get out of the car, it ought to be all about exalting him. When I'm around a brother or sister in Christ, it ought to be about exalting him. Not gossiping, amen. Not talking about other people. Not talking about their kids, grandkids. Amen, I'm, that's good preaching. Somebody better help me. See, we ought to be talking more about God, exalting Him together. There's something about corporate worship. You can worship God in a tree stand or on a bass boat if you want to. But there's something about coming to the house of God, being around other believers, and exalting Him together. You can't get by yourself. Now, we ought to continually always be praising Him. But man, there's something about coming. Brother Kenneth, when you couldn't come to church, something was missing, wasn't it? When it stops missing in your life, there's a problem. Now, I'm not, I'm not here questioning your salvation. I'm not doing that. I'm saying there's a problem. Maybe, maybe we've got our eyes on this instead of getting our heart on this. See, he's, he's expressing it inwardly, but his exaltation is outwardly. And, and so magnify the Lord with me. David said, listen, I'm doing it with or without you. Church, may I say this? If you want to be down in the dumps, depressed, grumpy, you be what you want to be, but your pastor ain't going to. There's some other people. You, you know what you're looking for? You're just looking for some permission not to be down in the muddy grubs all the time. You, here's your permission. Live for God. Enjoy your life. Exalt Him. Praise Him. Come to church with a smile on your face. Lift your hand and say amen. 
It's time that God's people started praising God again for his goodness and stop always talking about what we don't have, how bad the world is, how bad the government is, how bad Christians are, how dead the church is. All that may be true, friend, but the God we serve is not dead. He's still alive and he's still good in this day. And I think he's just wanting a, a, a group of corporately uh, uh, ex- people that are, are, are thankful to exalt his name together. I would like to be in that group, amen. I want to be in that crowd. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. They've said, I'm going to. But I'm inviting you to do it with me. And let us, me and you, exalt his name together. He said, I sought the Lord, he heard me. You ever done that? Hey, man. Well, how many times have I... Been in my prayer closet. You've been in yours. Angry at the world. Feeling sorry for myself. Saying, God, nobody cares about me. Nobody loves me. Look at all the bad stuff. Look at all the negative. Look at all this. Boy, it's like it's a, it's like it's a voice from another world that says, I love you. Mm, something, something gets to moving. Huh? Something gets to moving a little bit in you. And you're going, huh? You get those God bumps on you and you say, hmm. He said, I, I sought the Lord. He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Listen, you know what? We pray and we forget uh, to honor God in our, in our prayer life. Here's what I mean. How many times, how many times do you, somebody here in this church call my wife and say, listen, I need to put this on the prayer chain, put this on the prayer chain, put this on the prayer chain. But then when God answers the prayer, you don't say nothing about it. That ain't exalting God, is it? We ought, we ought to make our petitions known. We ought to pray for one another. But man, when God answers that prayer, you know what we ought to do? We ought to tell somebody about it. Because, listen church, here's what it sounds like to a lot of people. Them Christians are nothing but a bunch of whiners. All they do... Talk about, listen, so-and-so's got this wrong. No, uh, so-and-so's got this wrong. You know what? People need to hear that God's still in the miracle business. God's still saving souls. God's still changing lives. God's still doing stuff in our life. They need to hear it. You say, oh, preacher, ain't nobody getting saved anymore. They don't want to hear about God anymore. Why? Look at us. Brother Gary, I'm scared to death as some people how, how things are going. Because they might tell you. Three hours later, I gotta go. Well, I, I just gotta. I've only got you through the past two weeks. I got two more weeks to go. Right? I mean, when somebody, asks, how how's it going? Why don't we focus on what God has done for us? I'm gonna give you some help. When you're at work, you're at the grocery store, you're at church, and people see you walking, and they scatter like, like cockroaches when the light comes on, you know what it probably is? You probably have told them all the bad stuff going on in your life, and they're afraid to be in front of you because when they say, how you doing, you're going to tell them. It, or it may be you had not had a shower, I don't know, but I'm just saying it's one or the other. Nothing wrong with saying, listen, pray for me, but won't you throw in a couple how good God is? You know what they say? They say when you, when you have to uh, correct somebody, you, you ought to put, they call it the, the criticism sandwich. You say something good, Brother Charles, then you tell them what's wrong, and then you say something good again. I probably shouldn't have told you all that because when I do it to you now, he's going, preacher, put me in the sandwich. But that's how we ought to do with people. How, how's things going? Boy, I tell you what, God sure has been good this week. Let me tell you how, what God's done for me. Blah, 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 blah. And by the way, my, my sister uh, has, has got cancer. Would you pray for her? But li- listen what else God has done. Instead, you run down the grocery aisle all through the cereal aisle and you get, go with me on this next aisle. I got some more bad stuff to tell you. 
there's an expression, but there ought to be an exaltation among God's people. People ought to, they ought to know something's going on down here at this church. We're not a bunch of whiners. We're not a bunch of complainers. We're not a bunch of worldly uh, uh, keep up with what's going on in the world. Listen, it's one thing to know what's going on in this world. It's a whole other thing that the Bible says we're to uh, set our affections on things above. I don't know if your 401 k is ever coming back. But I know Jesus is coming back. That's where, our, that's where our vision ought to be. So here David is talking about the exaltation. But watch this. He said in verse 6, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. And saved him out of all his trouble. Now look at verse 7. He said, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. So in verse number 6, David is talking about uh, salvation. In verse number 7, David is talking about uh, the supply that God and the protection that God gives in verse number 7. Isn't that, isn't that it? He said he puts angels around you. The devil can't do anything to you unless God allows it. Right? Now, now you've got to be in that camp. To have that protection of God. But then I like what verse 8 says. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord. Now that doesn't say does good, does it? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. What it says. Didn't say Taste and, and see that the Lord does good. He said, taste and see that the Lord is good. So we're to express it before God even does anything good. Right? Because whether he does anything good to us or not, he still is good. So we're not expressing inwardly our praise for him and blessing him because he does good. We're doing it because he is good. Then we're to exalt him. David said, I'm going to do it. I invite you to do it with me. We're to do that right now. Before he does good, we're to ex exalt him. Yeah? Then David says, I want you to experience it. There is when God does good because he is good. Amen? See, that, that word taste is an experience. When I eat something good, I'm experiencing a sensation that tells my brain, this is good. Or it ain't too good. We, we went one day, maybe Friday, we, we went by Wendy's. Got us something to eat. We were going to some friend's house that night to eat. So we were like, well, we're going to eat something light, kind of. So Ellen got her thing and I got mine. I bit in my hamburger. I won't taste too good. Bit into it again. That tastes about as hard as that. They had burnt my hamburger. And I'm not picky, Brother Junior. I mean, I'm talking about I like red meat, even a hamburger. And if it's okay, you ain't going to hear me complain. This one here, I feel like I've cracked some teeth on this one. It was rough. And I'm just thinking how in the world can you mess up a hamburger at a hamburger place that you've probably done 18 million a day on but it wasn't no good and, and, and so we were trying to eat quick and get all that done and get on you know and, and so the experience that I had from that taste was not good you ever been like that but then the night before, 
Brother Danny, we went and ate a steak. And that, you know, when they come, they say, now, would you like some steak sauce with that? I, I hope I don't need it. Because if you do your job right, I won't need anything to cover up the taste of this beautiful piece of cow. You with me? The taste sends a signal to my brain, said, this is good. And what David's saying is, I've got to already know that God is good in here, and then I have to express it before I ever experience it. But then when I experience it, David said, oh, taste and see, that the, that's when our faith becomes sight. See, till you get to the place that you stop looking at all the circumstances, right? And saying, this isn't good, this isn't good. God, why is God doing this? Why is this isn't good? My life is terrible. My life stinks. It's awful. That's your outward. That's you tasting of something that ain't good. But when my heart's where it needs to be, and I'm already praising God because He is good, then I can experience the goodness of God because I'm experiencing it through what He does for me. I've got to acknowledge it before I experience it. You say, well, that's not how I operate, preacher. I have to experience it before I acknowledge it. What happens when you don't experience it? It doesn't change the character of God. God's still good even when you don't experience His goodness. Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love God. So, whatever God does is out of his goodness. And so I just got to thinking this morning, when I heard that little story about that young man, how, how much I complain. That stuff don't matter. Here's a, here's a crippled guy, can't walk, crawls up the altar, didn't get on the altar and say, God, heal my legs. Didn't say, God, why is all this happening to me? Just got on the altar and said, God, you've been good to me. And boy, people like that can see the goodness of God. Why can't we? David said, I have to express it, right? Before I do that, I got I to gotta, I gotta know it in here. Then he speaks of exaltation that when, when we all get there, get together, man, church shouldn't be a griping session. It shouldn't be complaining. It ought to be when God's people come together and exalt him. And when we do that, we get to experience it. That's what we're after. We're after the experience, right? You, you, people get on these crazy roller coasters. The older you get, I ain't getting on one. I ain't. Amen? Brother Rob, you know people won't jump out of airplanes. Why? I mean, I, if it's going down, maybe. But I, I, I had that on my bucket list. You might get to that bucket quicker if you do it. I don't want to jump out of no airplane. Now, if you do, bless your heart. You're... But why do people do it? They want to experience this rush, this adrenaline, right? There's something about experiencing things. And God, God wants us to experience his goodness. But whether you experience it or not doesn't change who he is. And, and we get it backwards because we want to experience it and then praise God for it. But when we praise God for it, then we seems like we start finding things, right? Huh. God did that. Huh. God did that. God did that. God did that. When we have to experience it first, we miss all this and we're going, okay, God, let me have the big one. Right? I need the big miracle right now. When all along, God's... Yeah? 
God puts people in your life, situations in your life, blesses your life. And if you're just looking for the big one all the time, you miss all these daily blessings. And I believe that's what Dave was saying. When I, when I have my heart right, when I'm exalting him, making much him, all of a sudden I start experiencing daily the goodness of God. Now let me close with this. How would that change your life and my life if we'd start doing that? Well, Tim, how would it change our church? How would it change where you work, where you go to school? How would it change the grocery store? How would it change our community? It's up to us. Having a heart of praise is a choice you make. It's not based on circumstance, based on your attitude, my attitude. Because it does not change. If God, listen, if God never sent another dollar my way or your way, he'd still be good. Because that's who he is. And when we get tapped into that, all of a sudden, we start recognizing the blessings of God in our life. Now, I don't know this morning what your situation is. You may look and say, you don't know a thing about what's going on in my life, preacher. And you're probably right. But that does not change the fact that God is still good. Let's stand together. Let's bow our heads this morning. The altar's open. Maybe you just need to come get on the altar and you want to thank God and say, God, I want to thank you for who you are. Maybe this morning... By an uplifted hand, no one's looking around. You'd say, preacher, I'm not 100% sure if I died today, I'd go to heaven. I'd want you to pray for me. I'd like to do that. Would you do that? If I died right now, I don't know that I'd go to heaven. Thank you. Is there another? Father, I thank you for the precious soul that raised their hand that may be others. Let them know you love them. You want to save them before it's eternally too late. Give them confidence. Step out. And take the Bible and show them how they can know. Lord, others may be here and they didn't raise their hand, but in their heart it's unsettled. I pray that you do the same with them. Give us all a heart of gratitude. May we praise you and exalt your name because you are good. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you raised your hand or you didn't, you want to know for sure how you know that you're on your way to heaven, you come. Maybe again, like I said, others are on the altar. You just want to get on this altar. Say, God, I want to thank you for who you are. I want to thank you for being so good to me. Thank you for being good to me. Just those words. You mind the Lord this morning. Isn't he good? He does good because he is good. God is so good. He's so good to me. play that one more time I want to sing together God is so good you know the words to it here we go God is so good God is so good God is so good he's so good to me here we go he died for me for me he died for me he's so good to me he answers prayer he answers prayer
prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good. He's coming soon. Let's finish up with that. Here we go. He's coming soon. 